Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, my name is Justin Summer, and I'm a Solutions Architect at Dell Tech. So with that um, out of the way, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, my name is uh, Justin Summer, and I'm a Solutions Architect with Dell Tech. And before we jump right into the uh, COBRA demonstration, I just wanted to go over um, just kind of the current situation that we're seeing out there as well as um, just a brief high-level overview of COBRA for those of you that may not be familiar with it at all. Um, just to talk about some of the things that we'll be um, going over uh, in the system and maybe to help you kick off some questions that you might have. So to get, to get started, um, I just want to talk about some of the current things that we're seeing out there. Um, as we go around and talk to other customers and um, as we go into uh, customers and, and see the systems that they have, um, and then help them migrate over to some of the common things that we're seeing here is what we see in the list. Um, what I see a lot of times is whenever I go into uh, to a customer's organization, um, majority of the time we see a lot of people using uh, Excel um, or Access Databases to help manage their project costs um, as well as do earned value. Um, and to some extent that, that, that does work, um, except until you get to the point where um, executives and management begin to uh, maybe demand a little more of their data, want to do more, want to see more. Um, at the same time, a lot of times what we'll see is the systems, whether it's Excel or Homegrown or maybe another um, software system, over time, you know, things become a little more complex maybe. Or again, more demands are brought onto the system and the processes and the people. Um, and with that, you know, the system that was working maybe before begins to uh, have areas where it may falter and you need to upgrade you need to um, go to a system that can provide you the capabilities to do cost management and earn value um, easier. And a lot of times what we're also seeing is um, earned value is becoming a more of a best practice as opposed to the requirement. A lot of times um, management and organizations want to apply those earned value techniques to all the programs, and maybe some even like a simplified way to gain the benefit of what earned value really does uh, provide you. Um, and in order to do that, um, a lot of times the system that you currently have do, it makes it difficult. So having a system like Cobra um, eases that uh, ability um, to provide that type of information and data, which is very important to um, keeping a project, or project on progress and uh, within budget and their expectations. So a few uh, high-level features, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of these features as we go through the slides and so in, in the tool. Um, again, Delta Cobra is not just earned value management. It is a cost performance system as well. Um, it's very flexible and scalable. Um, a lot of times we'll see customers using it for maybe just capturing actuals for a project to all the way to full-fledged um, earned value um, submission. And they can have a mix of that within the same instance of the same system. So it's very flexible and scalable to meet your needs as a company. Um, a lot of times companies and organizations just want to put everything, all the projects in COBRA, because it really becomes like a central data source in, a, in, a, um, in an area where you can do all your analysis on your projects no matter what type of um, level of you know, cost management or value you're doing. Um, and of course, supports um, all the ANSI 748 compliant requirements, which again, those are the guidelines that help you to fulfill the earned value requirements. Um, a very popular capability of COBRA is the estimating proposal and what if analysis. Um, and we'll see some of the ways that you can have multiple forecasts um, as well as to do some pricing up of your data. Uh, and your project costs and run, run reports and see that. And do also do comparisons. Um, Cobra is there to do cost schedule integration. We have a lot of, we interface with a lot of different systems as well as provide the ability to, if you don't have a schedule, don't want to upload Excel or do some other type of integration, you can enter it right into the Cobra as well. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the things that, um, that I touched on. Uh, earned value is obviously a big component of, of Cobra. Um, baseline management is a key component um, and a module of, of COBRA that comes with it right out of the box. Um, it helps you to automatically track, track any baseline changes. 
Um, it does the transactions in the system for you to capture that information to provide it on the report. Um, you can save uh, lots of different ways you can save uh, versions of your baseline and a lot of different ways like right out of the box that you could tackle um, baseline revisions uh, and being able to see the traceability over time of how your baseline has changed. Um, as well as, of course, there's tons of different analysis and performance calculations that the system does for you. As we go through, you're going to see um, variances, uh, thresholds popping out at you. As, we, as soon as we log into COBRA, you're going to start to see color bands of how you're performing on your project and then within the project, how you're doing on a control accounts and work packages. Budgeting and forecast, like I said before, there's lots of different cost and schedule integrations. Um, as you can see here, I've got some of the ones that are listed, you know, open plan, different versions of Microsoft Project, Primavera, as well as Excel, and flat files that can go in. And again, like I said, multiple forecasts and, and budget baselines. And you'll see how um, in the demo how we utilize um, multiple types of budgets as well as uh, forecasts. Um, to help analyze our project as well as to help keep track of um, different cost information in the project. And of course, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at the different reports that you can get out of the system. What that's going to do is really help us to understand what type of data you can put into the system and how you see it and how you get it out of it and what's the benefit of it, of it coming out of the system. COBRA has its own reporting engine uh, that generates reports. Um, by default, they're going to come out in Excel, but you can uh, run them in a variety of formats like PDF and CSV files and whatnot for you for that as well. Um, the reports are, there's over 50 plus uh, reports out of the box, uh, but they're kind of what we consider report templates. So they're report templates that you can then run at any time when you want using batch reporting. And you pick your criteria and your filters and your sorts, and you can save it and you run it. We consider it a report template because it's very ad hoc in that if something changes, you get a request from a program manager or an executive, it's very easy to go in, pick that type of report that you want, and change your parameters, your filters, and your sorts. So I'm going to jump over to COBRA. And what we kind of see when we log in, first log into COBRA, is you're going to come up with a project view screen is what we call it. Um, what the screen is doing is this is going to give you a, a list of all the projects that you have access to in the system. Uh, there's a variety of different ways that you can view projects. Uh, currently, I have it on over here what's called a master project view. Um, real briefly, master project uh, is a way in COBRA to group projects into some higher level um, master projects. And what it does is it facilitates reporting across the organization, divisions, portfolios, enterprises, um, and allows you to see a more rolled up view of your project at a higher level to send those reports to um, program directors, executive management, or even program managers. Uh, and then, again, within that same report, to drill down into more of the detail. Um, so here we'll be, most of the demo will be looking at this, what we call like this enterprise, and then these are the six projects that make up that enterprise. So we're going to see a mixture of reports that have all six of these projects as well as reports that just focus on uh, this particular uh, set of that we have here. Um, in addition to this master project view, there's a project view, which is just a list of projects. And there's also ways that you can define a uh, hierarchy um, what a, however your organization wants to define it, that you can view these projects. So let's say I have a portfolio view. And in that portfolio view, I've got satellite, ship, manufacturing, you know, and government non-satellite, or non-government satellite. And here, what I'm doing is I'm grouping my projects into different these different portfolio areas. And again, this is can be used in reporting, and provided in reporting, in your reports, like we'll see in a little bit, uh, as well as being able to view your data quickly and easily um, into whatever portfolio section that you may be responsible for, somebody in the organization is responsible for, or to be able to give a quick and easy answer of how you're performing at portfolio level. Um, before we move on to the project, I just want to show you that there's a lot of different um, columns and fields that you can include in, in your project at the, this project view. Uh, again, to give you that quick and easy information that you may want to see and view 
A lot of times I, have, I use this project view for optimize maybe status earned value projects or change my budget or um, imported actuals. It gives me a quick view to look over the earned value metrics and some other metrics just to get a, again, a quick uh, glance at maybe potential issues that happen during the load. Maybe um, I loaded status and somebody didn't status something correctly and it pops out because my, you know, CPI tanks or SPI tanks. So again, it's just there to help you to focus in on areas that are of concern or maybe if you give access to, you know, management, um, program directors, whoever, they again can see it very quickly and easily at a project level and, you know, those various portfolio levels, how it's performing. So I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this uh, project and we'll just go over briefly kind of what it looks like to, to view it at the project level and maybe some uh, features that we're going to see that um, as we're looking at this project level and then we'll get into the reports where we can really see a lot of data. So over here in the project level, um, this is kind of the main, this is the main screen when you're interacting with the data uh, within COBRA. Um, so just briefly go over some of the different panels that we're seeing here. Over here on the left is our um, work breakdown structure. And what it's doing over here on the left is um, it's being utilized to help us filter down what we're seeing over here in this panel. And what we see over in this panel over here is our control accounts and work packages. And the reason that all we're seeing over here and why we're seeing the data in our control account and work packages is that's really where we're capturing our cost and performance. So um, when you're working in COBRA and I need to interact with something, provide performance, change the budget, whatever it may be, I'm really focused in on the areas that, um, that my costs are coming in at. So my actual, where my actual is coming in at, they're coming in at maybe a work package or maybe a control account. Where am I budgeting? Where am I forecasting at? And that's what we're really looking at here and that's what this is identifying is these are the areas where the actual cost is coming in. This WBS is just a roll up of those costs um, and that we can utilize that WBS when we run reports to again see that roll up of that cost. Similar to the project view, uh, we're seeing the same type of color bands. Again, so now I've looked at the project, I've opened up the project, and now I can scroll down and easily see um, the different color bands as I scroll down. And I can see maybe areas and issues um, and potential problems as I, as I quickly scroll down through, through here. Again, you can add, just like in the other um, project review screen, you can add a lot of different um, columns to this as well as move these columns around. Um, the idea is we want you to be able to look at the data that you want to see and how you want to see it. Um, this is saved for every user, so next time you come in, you're going to see whatever it is that you wanted to see last time, and a different user will see something different. So again, trying to give you that ability to see um, quickly and easily what you want to see and how you want to how you want to see it. Down here in the bottom pane, we've been as I've been clicking around, we've been just looking at this general um, information here. And what this is just telling me is this is information that's come over from the schedule or from an upload, like an Excel upload, or quite possibly something that you just keyed in if you've got a very simple project. Um, anything that we're seeing here, you don't have to integrate it over. You can just um, key it in through COBRA. This is where I did a proposal in COBRA. I went ahead and just keyed everything in directly into COBRA because it was easier. There's lots of changes and modifications that I was doing with the program manager. Um, so it was just easier to have it directly in here and not go through any integration um, process. Again, that's because our schedule wasn't real solidified yet, and it was just a very easy way to, um, to manage that process. Um, over here in the resource tab is where um, we're capturing resources. So where are these resources coming from? Um, the budgeting and the forecasting resources, um, like I've mentioned before, it's coming over from whatever scheduling system you may be using that. Um, or it's coming over from a flat file. Um, so if you're using uh, maybe DevTech Open Plan or Microsoft Project, any of the resources in there, you can bring over the budget as well as the estimate to complete the forecast that you have in the system. Um, and again, of course, you can enter it in and add resources directly into here. Actuals, um, I'm capturing actuals here. 
And again, actuals are coming from the accounting system. So if you have cost point, there's a built-in interface uh, to pull actuals from cost point into Cobra. If you're not a cost point customer, there is still a way that we can bring over the actuals. Um, we're going to do those through flat files, like a, a CSV file. And of course, we can do um, a bunch of different projects at one time with just one file if we, if we wanted to. So we, we make it very easy to um, extract the data information out of your accounting system and to upload it into um, Cobra. Any processes um, that you do, whether it's monthly, like actually actual um, advancing the calendar or you know, calculating earned value, that can all be done um, overnight or on demand using our um, batch processing uh, capability. And you can so um, you can load in you know forecasts or uh, integrate your schedule across a thousand projects you know overnight through a batch process. You don't have to go one at a time or any of this kind of stuff. And finally one other thing that I just want to touch on uh, what we're looking at here, again, we're going to see this in reports as well, but to kind of give you a sense of where that came from and how it came from it, um, it's down here at the second to last column. Cobra has got a capability of um, allowing you to enter in data attributes um, that are relevant to you and to your organization. So there's some reserved space in the system uh, for you to tag um, data. Uh, in this case, a very popular one is uh, by CLIN. So I've tagged my control account to map and to relate to a particular CLIN. And then I could do reporting by CLIN. Um, as well as, as I scroll down, um, here is a funding control account. And that's, again, attached to the CLIN that some of these other control accounts are attached to. And I can do uh, maybe a funding profile and see how my funding burns uh, down as I go across time. And we'll see a report of that. Um, by CLIN, and I'll actually roll it up to uh, portfolio levels as well. So a lot of different options and capabilities. It doesn't have to be the same across all the projects, your data attributes. Um, however, for consistency and just uh, ease of use when you're accessing information, again, at higher levels, um, it's usually good practice to uh, have some organization-defined um, uh, data attributes that you're going to use on your project. But again, it's it's customizable for each project, so if your project has some other types of requirements or demands, it can accommodate that as well. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to, um, to demonstrate some of these reports. And again, again, whether it's at the enterprise level or um, at a particular project level, to give you kind of sense and feel for some of the capabilities and some of the things that um, Cobra can do for you, as well as to kind of give you a, a feel for um, the type of data that um, that you're going to be seeing coming out of the system. Um, so since we've been talking a lot about um, earned value, uh, baseline management change, um, I'm going to the first report that I want to show you is this um, project reconciliation report. So for those of you that um, whether you're required to have earned value on a program or as is the best practice, want to be able to check, track your baseline changes over time. Um, so provides again this auto automatic tool to capture the changes for you as, you as you're making those changes. And it has a number of different reports that um, log those changes for you to then view uh, later on. This is one particular example of a report that captures um, my baseline changes as, as time goes by. Um, this one does it at the um, control account level. Uh, you can go all the way down to capturing changes by resource on these particular logs that we're looking at here. Um, these are groups by different time periods. So we're, again, what we're looking at here is I can quickly and easily see um, the different changes, the amount of changes, as well as um, what cost buckets those changes have come in and out of um, from, as well as user, transaction ID. And again, here are headings that we're looking at here. Um, just giving us uh, the different, you know, management reserve or performance baseline. Um, again, those different buckets of money that this, this data, this cost is moving in and out of. So, um, again, this is all does it all automatically for you. Um, it'll bring up a box for you to enter in the information um, once the change has been made, and it logs it for you automatically. Going along with the request, um, there's a new requirement um, out there on the CPR format 3 to be able to capture changes by time um, time phase. 
Um, so the old format three did not require it unless it was agreed upon with you and the customer to capture it by change um, on this format three. And so what Delta Del did is we've gone in and we've updated all the um, earned value uh, reports, required reports, to the newest um, DIDs or the newest uh, requirements for any new earned value project that, that's coming up um, and that is active. And so this is just one example of what a uh, CPR, um, cost performance report, for those of you who don't know it, uh, how it comes out of the system and provides information. Uh, all this header information is coming from stuff that we've defined uh, in the project information in COBRA. And it just pulls over and comes into here. As we come down, we can see um, different changes that I've made and then the time saving of those changes. And then, in a way, the reconciliation back to my um, performance management baseline. Uh, so this is an example of a, a CPR format, a CPR report, as well as the new requirements that um, we've updated the system for to capture, you know, this time phase information. Another report that I want to show you is um, within within Cobra, um, it uses a reporting engine like I talked about before. All the reports are written in an Excel template. And what that Excel template is, is um, it, provide, it gives you a way to um, run reports using capabilities within Excel. So for example, Excel graphs. So what this report is, it was rendered from uh, Cobra. And uh, what I did was I just utilized um, some of the formatting capabilities through Excel to help change the, to, to modify the report a little bit, um, just to give it a little different color, um, maybe change the background, um, and it maybe change the color to make it pop for me um, to bring out uh, the different metrics that we're seeing here uh, and easier to read. Um, so again, all these templates and all these reports are in Excel. They're Excel-based. Originally, they're Excel-based. And so you can do a lot of different conditional formatting that we'll see in another report. And again, here, just simply modifying uh, a graph to um, make it visually a ple as a visually um, pleasing to anybody that, um, that wants to run it or see it. Um, it's very easy to take an existing template or configuration um, and modify it and, uh, and update it. Typically for security, the templates are held in a location where an admin would get at it. Not everybody would be able to just change uh, templates whenever. Uh, but once you do change a template, anybody in the organization can use it or it's updated for anybody's report. Um, a few time phasing reports and, and different ways, and what I want to highlight here is just different ways that you can group and organize your data and information. So what I'm doing here in this report is this is just a time phase report, and um, I'm utilizing headcount, um, equivalent headcounts across the organization. And, and this one is across the organization. This is utilizing that enterprise project that we saw before. As you can see here, I've got my six different projects. And then in this first column here, I'm actually first grouping and sorting uh, by the resource. So here I can see across these six different projects how much time is required for that particular resource. Um, this is a general resource category. Um, you can put in uh, you know, actual people uh, resources into COBRA, but typically we see at a more of a general category level because it's easier to manage and, and, and to keep up with maintenance and um, not so much detail uh, in the system. But you could put in person and then be able to see the demands for that particular person um, across the organization. Uh, headcount again, headcount. So this is again just showing you different ways you can group and sort um, and, uh, and view your data and, and information. Um, also, what I want to show on here is with, with every uh, report that runs, you're going to get a few different tabs um, that helps to, again, to help generate the report. So there's maybe a calendar tab to um, provide the calendar information that was used when you ran the report. Also, an important tab is this data tab. And this data tab is all the raw information that was used to create and render the report. So a lot of times what we'll see is if you run a report, good, but maybe somebody has some additional questions, um, or maybe they want to see that information 
um, quickly, you know, maybe some weird different way. Um, you can easily come into this data tab and create um, another sheet, maybe like this, another type of graph report. Um, so now I can filter on, you know, different types of um, resources and see um, maybe by a particular project and see um, how that resource is across all projects or whatever it may be. So um, again, that data tab is there to help you to expand on uh, the report and the information that you may need to do um, and to utilize. A lot of times we'll see where people will run the reports and they'll have an add-in that will use this data to help create additional um, data and information or dashboards for people. Kind of going along with this, the time phasing reports and the time phasing theme, the time phase report. And what this one's doing is this one's actually comparing two different sets of, of cost information. So I have my original baseline here under schedule. And then I've got another um, cost grouping um, that's all my budget without, um, um, excuse me, with, with, with changes to it. Um, and so what here is now I can do a comparison. So now I can see for a particular, in this case, a particular control account, how much my budget has changed and then what time periods it's changed again. Um, so this is kind of like that CPR format three, but at a little more detailed level, and it allows you to get at a more detailed level. This is that control account. I can go to work package. I can see it by CAM. I can see it at the project level. Um, again, a variety of different ways I can look at this, and again, see variances. Um, you can do this with forecasts, so I can see what my forecast was last month versus this month. I can do a variance and compare them um, as well, and see where my forecast changed from. Um, who is responsible for the chain, you know, what CAM was it under, um, and whatnot. So there's a lot of different capabilities and ways that you can do just a simple, you know, compare of your different costs in the system. So, of course, we've been talking about some earned value and some performance and project metrics. Um, what I did here was I created a report um, you utilize an existing template, and I, what I did was I just added in um, a lot of uh, as many project metrics as I could as I could think of um, into the report, just to give you a flavor of how you can add in a lot of different stuff and be able to see um, a lot of different metrics um, to help you to to identify issues and areas um, easily. So here I've got a lot of different just additional formatting. Um, and so as I scroll down, and, it, and this is at various levels as well, um, as I scroll down through the sheet, I can really see um, where something might stick out, you know. And again, this is all time phase, so I can always go across the time, but I can, I can begin to pick out as I scroll down. So here, I can pick out quickly and easily that, um, in this case, my CPI and SPI for the current period are basically zero um, when they were pretty, when they were um, well, a little crazy, a little normal, the, the period before. So that instantly, as I've just scrolled down through here, I can see uh, where a potential issue might be, um, what happened. I only have $287 in um, you know, what I've actually performed on the project. I've got much more um, actuals as well as budget. So that's just something to look into and to see what maybe happened. And again, that was as easy as just being able to scroll down and utilizing um, the formatting here, conditional formatting, just to check for, for values um, in my project metrics. Um, we have in things like burn rate and average monthly costs as well uh, into the, any of these reports. Um, you'll notice this one's layered through a diff few different levels. If I scroll back up to the top, I have it at a project level, then I have it by CAM, and then within the CAM I have got it by their, the control accounts they're responsible for. So as you can see, um, you can drill it down into lower and lower levels, or I can just keep it up here at this top level, and I'm only seeing at the total project level here. Um, again, so try to give you that information that you want to see, when you want to see it, and then if you need to drill into it more, allow that capability without having to run another report to drill into it a little bit more. And again, here I can see all kinds of different schedule matrix um, and my cumulative costs across it as I go over throughout time. Um, we had briefly talked about uh, funding uh, before. Here's a, here's a report and an example of where I'm taking at. I've got uh, maybe a particular level. 
then a project, and then I go down to the CLIN level. And what this is doing is this is, again, giving me some more performance metrics, but it's really focusing in on um, my funding versus my budget and my EAC. And I've color coded it here so you can see as, as time goes across where, in this particular case, this CLIN runs out of funding and um, it never, it never, there's never even that forecast to ever come back and recuperate from it. Um, so again, here, this is just <clears throat> to help you understand your funding profile and how it can be burned down over time and when you may need to ask for more funding or um, need to adjust your budget or EAC or cost to um, accommodate for the funding requirements. And finally, just I want to show one more, um, again, cost performance report and just another, highlight another capability of uh, COBRA, and that is to capture variance explanations. If you're required to provide variance explanations or if it's just the best practice to provide variance explanations, you can do that through COBRA and then um, generate these different types of reports, this report here, for example, uh, that will display those variance explanations um, for any of the control accounts that you've entered in for. So there is a, a tool within COBRA that you can go in um, called uh, uh, Variance Analysis. And you can go in, you can enter in your information, like your explanation of variances, impact, corrective actions, whatever it may be, into the system. And then that information is stored in the database and then could be um, printed out on, onto a report. Um, alternatively, we've seen this CPR format uh, 5 used where this is generated from COBRA and then um, distributed in the uh, information is then keyed in directly onto this. It serves as like a form that allows the business to fill in if you do not want to capture it directly into, um, into COBRA. But there is that option. And finally, um, I mentioned it, so I want to show it. Um, Here's just an example of a report. Again, I'm utilizing different multiple baselines and forecasts in, in, in various different ways. Uh, so here what I'm doing is um, I have defined in the system an unapproved budget and unapproved forecast cost bucket. And the costs that are held in there are um, maybe I'm making a baseline change, but it's not implemented yet into the baseline. But I want to be able to see the cost. I want to be able to see how it looks within the budget. Um, and so what I can do is I can have that in a separate cost bucket. I can report on it separately here, like you're seeing, or I could include it within my budget um, as like an unapproved uh, final baseline that I can then see the impact and how that looks like and what it looks like if I have my budget as part of my baseline. Um, but the kind of idea with this report was to run a report and to be able to see all the pending um, budget and forecast changes out there that haven't been yet approved um, in, into the system. So it's kind of like an audit report as well as uh, giving an idea of maybe some uh, potential changes or impacts to the forecast or budget that you're going to be seeing. Um, this, this will conclude the, the webinar and the live demo. Um, and again, thank you for uh, joining me. Hopefully we answered a lot of your questions. And again, if you have any additional questions, just uh, let us know.